Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Celebrating Act 2. Thanks for joining us. Art, we've got a special guest today, um, a lady who is a well-published writer, written for Huffington Post, the New York Times Love Column, um, a bunch of places where you would have read her. And she's a blogger, well-known blogger, about widowhood. Pray tell. Widowhood. Yes, widowhood. Now, you and I don't have too much experience about widowhood, do we? No, but we could probably go on for a half hour. <laughs> I happen to have some friends who are widows, mm -hmm. so that's something. But widowhood, unfortunately, is much too common. And Debbie Weiss, who is our guest, has written about it and written about her experiences. And I have to say, even though I'm not a widow, and I probably won't ever be a widow, I've really enjoyed, really enjoyed all her I writing. think it's actually time for us to say hello to Debbie. It is, it is. Hi, Debbie. Debbie. Well, Hi. Thanks so, for having me on. <laughs> you're welcome. Debbie, I, I'm curious about the name, The Hungover Widow. You, your website is thehungoverwidow.com. How did Hungover Widow happen? Well, there are two reasons. Um, one was when my husband passed, I was pretty unhappy. And I was drinking a lot of Manhattans at the time, not ah, anymore. And they're pretty and, good. I, I, they're my favorite drink, by the way. Yeah, very powerful. Very good. And uh, the other reason is I felt like widowhood always had this idea of being so perfect. Um, sort of like you had to be really proper as a widow. You had to be really careful. So I kind of wanted to put it with something that suggested human fault, hence hungover. Yeah, but uh, um, the, uh, your writing, even though you're doing it from the standpoint of a widow, and you were, you were married for 30 years, so, or thereabouts, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, uh, this was, unfortunately, your, your husband passed away and um, uh, this is all like you're thrown into a whole new world. But right. when I was reading your blogs, it seems to me that the advice and the information you were given was almost as uh, uh, accessible for a widower as a widow. In other words, if, if you read underneath those kind of insecurities, how did you, have you always been a writer? How, how did you learn how to write in such a, a clear voice? Oh, thank you. I'm a former attorney. So <laughs> the kind of law I practiced insurance coverage, we're called coverage geeks, uh, used a lot of research and writing. And we had to make things that were kind of complicated, understandable by the judge. And I was taught not to use uh, have really long paragraphs or super long sentences, which didn't help very well when I tried to write more seriously. But it actually kind of helped towards writing for fun. Hmm. Very interesting. Very, and it does make your writing accessible. Uh, and as Art okay. points out, even though you're writing for women uh, primarily, the stories you tell about your dating after being a widow, dating uh, and, and searching for companionship, they really hit home with men, I have to tell you. Mm -hmm. So I think you've got a very broad audience. Witness the fact that so many magazines and uh, periodicals have published your, your work as well as your blog. Oh, thank you. I have heard from widowers as well. I do hear from widowed men, and usually they're, they're pretty positive as well about, about the writing. Or, or being able to, to relate to, to ideas of loneliness or reinventing yourself. Yeah. yeah. I, I also, uh, uh, for, the, for our audience, uh, I think it's important to note that while uh, you're a trained attorney and you certainly knew how to write uh, in one form or another, you didn't just start writing. You actually went out and got a master's in writing. What was that all about? What caused you to do that? Uh, uh, before you started writing the blog? Well, I was writing the blog, and I'd had articles published, but I wanted to write a book. Um, that was really important to me. And I was in a writing group, and I did a weekly writing class uh, through an adult education center. 
but I really didn't feel that my writing was improving that much and I wanted to have other people to get feedback. So I basically enrolled in a, in a master's, I enrolled in a two year uh, master's program at St. Mary's College of California to get a master's of fine arts in writing to try to make the book better, to see if I could write a whole book and to get feedback on it. And basically, you know, that's a, that's a pretty good accountability partner. Yeah, where's the book now, by the way? It's it's not, you haven't published it yet, have you? Have you finished it? It's finished. It's been finished a while. I worked with an amazing editor. I was really lucky to work with her. Um, and it is coming out in September of 2022, about a year away from She Writes Press, which ah, is the award-winning yeah. hybrid publisher for women's authors. So right. it is, it's it's incubating. Yeah. <laughs> well, publishing is not a short-term process. We know that. No, um, no it's a year what, away. What's the book going to be called? It's called Widowland. Widowland. Mm. Okay, good. Widow I'm Land. going to look for it. I, I have some friends who have to read it. And by the way, they're mm. male. I'm thinking of. <laughs> um, yeah, single guys of a certain age, you know, over over 50, are celebrating Act Two is really for people over 50. We say that 50 is the beginning of the second half of your life. Um, yeah. Lord knows we're all living longer and uh, healthier. And and you were, am I correct, You when you were, became a widow, when your husband died, you were about 50 years old? Yeah, it was, uh, I was about four months away from my 50th birthday. Yeah. I was 49, and he was 53. You know, and I'm as sure. A, yeah, as, as a teaser, though, um, uh, there are a couple of things. What could you maybe give us the most uh, startling thing that you found as a as a widow going out of the dating scene again? Uh, maybe one or two things that were most startling, and maybe one or two things that were most satisfying. Okay, um, the most startling to me, and I hope your audience forgives me for this. I'm I'm no hashtag not all men. But in general, it was the extraordinarily poor quality of the middle-aged men out there who were single. I was sort of astonished. I'd married my high school sweetheart. And so I was kind of appalled when, you know, people couldn't meet up. They were completely disorganized. And one gentleman's idea of a second date was, come on over to Hot Tub and chill ax. You know, I mean, we're grown-ups. And this felt like a return to a very poor level of adolescence. Um, I was also kind of surprised how much of the hookup culture had sort of infiltrated people my age. Um, so I found the pickings extraordinarily slim in terms of finding a quality gentleman for a real act two or second chapter. That was yeah. the most startling. It's what I write about a lot. Um, it's gotten me even hate emails, which is kind of fun. Um, <laughs> the most satisfying thing to me uh, ultimately was finding my second partner in life. That was satisfying to find a real gentleman and uh, to be able to return to having a committed relationship, which is what I ultimately wanted. Hmm. Sure. Sure, if you've had a, have, a, have, have had a happy marriage, who wouldn't want to do it again? Yeah, I mean, some people don't. I think that's another thing that it wasn't startling to me, but it made a lot of sense is that, you know, when I was widowed, so many people like people I just meet at the Rotary Club or um, yoga would be like, well, are you dating? You're over it, right? You're ready to start over. And and the end of a super long marriage isn't like that at all. And the other issue is that times have changed. And there's a perfectly good recent way for, for folks of any age to decide to be single. That's a perfectly reasonable way to live your life. It doesn't have to be an, an interim state. And for women, it's kind of patriarchal, like the idea that, oh, you, you're you going to get married again. And that's something I wanted. But again, not all women. I, I think being on your own is a perfectly reasonable way to live your life. And I've met a lot of women who are far happier on their own. Yeah. Well, I think that's always been true. Um, yeah. We just don't always accept people's choices. Well, I think that uh, yeah. one, one of the uh, really uh, 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 endearing things to me about you is that uh, you, you, your language is sometimes very street. Um, and uh, it's like, yeah, uh, and you just let it out as it is. And it was very real and the emotions are real. 
Uh, but there's, there's, there's always seems to be uh, hope in uh, what you have to say. And I think that's going to be very important to people who read your book and certainly, by the way, could you give us the, uh, the best place for people to come find out about you, uh, uh, your blog, your website? Well, the hangoverwidow.com, it's having technical difficulties at the moment, but in general, that's the best place to find out about me. And I also write on Medium which is a huge online platform and you can find me there and why don't you, a why don't, bit can about... you just give us the name of the uh, medium so we'll put a, some information down below uh, uh in, the, in the credits i think it's debbie weiss at medium i'm not off the top of my head yeah. i forget how they structure it but you know i'm on twitter i'm on facebook with the hungover widow page it's easy to find me on facebook as the hungover widow i have a blog page perfect yeah uh, I love the title, by the way. Thank you. It's it, just irreverent enough for me. So yeah, I, I think. Yeah, and also the hope that while well, you can start out as a hungover widow, uh, you can wind up in a really wonderful relationship. So it's not right. a permanent state of affairs. Well, it just proves that there there is hope. There are some men out there who are not jerks. Oh, yeah. I mean, I write broadly, you know, and I write for humor. I had a lot of people who are kind of offended and it was sort of like, but this is my writing voice. This is a voice that's kind of wry and a little cynical, but I'm not. I mean, I have a lot of hope. I think part of what I'd want to convey is, you know, my husband died and I have written about this. He had cancer and he was in denial about having cancer. So the death was pretty traumatic because he was in denial. So he wasn't doing the kinds of things that would have made this easy to deal with. And when he was gone, I was pretty trashed. I had post-traumatic stress disorder. And what I want to get across is that, you know, things do get better. Your brain will reconstitute. There is joy again. But I think it takes so much longer than you would believe from the media. I don't think people deal with that. See, it's complicated grief. You should be over it. Nobody wants to hear about your marriage. Nobody wants to hear about the past. But there is a recovery. It's just, I think, deeply personal for everybody. And there can be joy. Um, you know, I'd never expected to get a graduate degree or write a book or find love again. But all those things were possible. It just took a lot longer than I expected. And that's kind of the message I'd want to convey. Yeah, it's a little prosaic, but you know, if you hang in there and keep saying yes to some new things, even tiny steps can start to give you a second, second chapter. Yeah. And, and whether you accept those uh, possibilities with a yes or not, you're, you're going through your second chapter. And I personally just think that's what you have to look at. You have to say, this is a new story. Um, yeah. I, it's a new pathway. I'm going to have to make choices. I'm going to have to find out well, what I, I like. I, I'm going to recommend that people either find you on, and we're going to have it in the uh, information down below in right. the YouTube uh, thing, on your YouTube, uh, uh, on Facebook, uh, on uh, your website, and at, uh, uh, at medium.com. Uh, medium. Medium. So all of that will be in there with the proper links for it. Yeah. And uh, we're looking forward to having you back when your book is published. And uh, talk about that chapter in your life. That would be wonderful. I would love to talk about that when it comes out. In the meantime, even though you have found love a second time and you've started a new chapter in your life and you're, but you recognize, we recognize you're still a widow and you're still writing about widowhood and dating as a widow for the rest of us. So we're going to keep reading your blogs and your articles as we find them. Debbie, thank you. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.